Okay. Here we go, you guys. We've got the uh, the grand poopa of articles. You can say this is almost like a culmination of all the videos that I've made, all the articles that I've read out or and left links to. Here we go. We got her. We got her. We got her. Mm-hmm. How about that? So, this is a good one. Ottawa. Ontario, January 9th, 2020. News that organ harvesting from Canadians killed by lethal injection is on the rise in Ontario. In Ontario. And has euthanasia opponents warning more horrors and assaults on human life are to come. Now, I just find it interesting that they never talk about BC. Rarely, rarely talk about BC. I think it's either just as bad or worse. Maybe that's why they never talk about it. Everybody says, well, it can't get any lower than it is but will get lower than it is because every time you break a new ethical barrier it opens up a new question Alex Schadenberg executive director of the Canada based euthanasia prevention coalition told LifeSite news there is growing evidence that the cohort that coercion plays a substantial role for many vulnerable vulnerable people with regards to so-called physician assisted death hell yeah excuse my language because you feel guilty because you're not contributing especially when you can't get a diagnosis and you're not you can't get disability and you can't get any help <clears throat> yeah there'd be a lot of guilt that's why I'm curious about the in the uh, Fraser Valley was it the Fraser Valley I think that other article um, the 308 people who died in one year waiting for surgery and the person pointedly said they didn't know the, anesthe the anesthesiologist who, who they'd interviewed he didn't know how they died did they die by maid? I think it's a valid question there is growing evidence that Oh yeah, I already. Yeah, coercion plays a substantial. Oh yeah, I read that. Conflating this decision with organ donation further complicates the issue of coercion, echoed John Smeaton, chief executive of the UK-based Society for the Protection of Unborn Children. We need to acknowledge the unsettling reality that many vulnerable people who have been euthanized without consent may also have had their organs harvested without explicit consent. Smeaton at uh, sorry you guys, I have a a bit of a cold coming. Okay, I am gonna leave the links. You, you, th whoa. Oh, it's still pretty high. It's a lot of people if you think about it. 5% of all the province's overall organ and tissue donations in 2019 were from euthanasia. Did you know that? Did anybody know that? I didn't. I suspected it and I told my mom about it <coughs> a few months ago and she, I could tell she thought. I was losing my mind. So. <laughs> okay, well, I've, 
I have two articles because uh, I like the way this one's written. Oh no, that's not the one. This one's more uh, straight talk. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? No, I thought was sorry. <clears throat> oh man. I didn't want it. I didn't want it to to be like this. I was hoping I was wrong. How do you convince society to embrace euthanasia as a means of attaining utilitarian benefit while also convincing yourself that your culture remains both moral and compassionate? Once you get past the squeamishness of allowing doctors to kill patients, it isn't that difficult. <clears throat> Sorry. First legalize euthanasia of the seriously ill and disabled. Once the community becomes comfortable with doctors committing homicide as a means of eliminating suffering, you next allow those who want to be killed to donate their organs. After all, they won't need their livers anymore, so why not let others have them? Next, ensure that the potential of euthanasia to add to the organ supply becomes well known, both to normalize the doctor, administer death, and to induce people to believe they or a loved one might personally benefit from doctors killing the sick. You see, they pervert everything. Because we know there's some people who are sick and they really aren't gonna get better. And then they just have to take it and run with it. And it's like, oh no, no, we just can't. You know, there's some, I don't know. I guess you don't know, you know? You have the people in the comas that wake up after years. Okay, excuse my language, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Induce people to believe they or a loved one might personally benefit from doctors killing the sick. Finally, over time, you expand euthanasia, organ donation, eligibility to patients who are far from death, such as those with neuromuscular disabilities or psychiatric illnesses. Better organs, don't you know? Justifying it as you go along with soothing words of respecting autonomy and preventing suffering. <laughs> That's why I like this article. Might as well just say it like it is. Lest any reader believe that I am conjuring a paranoid dystopian fantasy, this very scenario consumed the medical and organ transplant ethics of the Netherlands and Belgium Nations in which patients with mental illnesses and other diseases are admitted to hospitals, killed by lethal injection, and then wheeled immediately into a surgical suit for organ harvesting. And then wheeled... Uh, when I bring up these facts in domestic debates about assisted suicide, supporters of doctor-prescribed death sniff that the Netherlands and Belgium are not the United States and that such crass utilitarian exploitation of the despairing would never happen here, but why? Once we deem certain categories of people to be killable, which is pre precisely what legalizing assisted suicide and euthanasia does, and I'm going to 
ad in there and not giving adequate health care with just makes it really oh just really sick sick even sicker it's already sick but then you get into the macabre macabre <laughs> It becomes all too easy to conclude, as Belgians and Netherlands have, that since these patients want to die, we might as well benefit societally from their deaths. That is precisely what happened, what happened in Canada. <laughs> oh, what happened? What happened in Canada? Did you know most people have no idea? I bring it up and they're like, oh no, they're not doing that yet. They've been talking about it, but they're not doing it. <clears throat> the United States' closest cultural cousin and indeed a country many Americans see as having more enlightened public policies that are own, than our own. In the three years since lethal injection euthanasia became legal in Canada, at least 30 people were organ harvested after being euthanized. That number may soon increase dramatically as the Canadian medical establishment has come out solidly in favor of letting people who die by euthanasia also become organ donors. A major ethics guidance was just published in the Journal of the Canadian Medical Association that establishes euthanasia kill and harvest, in brackets, my blunt term, and I say thank you, protocols, it makes for a chilling read. The guidance urges th that the decision to be euthanized, called by the euphemistic acronym MADE, I'm glad somebody else caught that, medical assistance in dying, or medical aid, well, I've seen it as medical assistance in dying here, be made first and apart from the request to donate organs. The idea is to ensure that the ability to donate organs doesn't become the tipping point inducing the decision to die. But I can I would suggest that not giving adequate medical care might be motivation might be motivated to might be the tipping point talk about whistling past the graveyard it's not a secret that Canada permits the conjoining of killing and harvesting oh, oh okay well I guess it's not a secret to everybody else in the world it's a secret to most Canadians I can tell you that it's not a secret that Canada permits the conjoining of killing and harvesting. Indeed, the supportive media are already hyping the potential that more organs will soon be available because of the guidance. For example, the country's national paper, The Globe and Mail, published a major story that opens with a widow describing her husband's donation of organs after euthanasia as a bright spot in an other, otherwise black time. Moreover, the story reports that the doctors are already being inundated with inquiries by euthanasia patients about organ donation. <sighs> oh, yes. Just plug it. Why don't you just get a cable and just plug yourself straight in to your smart TVs? Then you won't miss any of the programming. The gift of life. <sighs> okay. Further undermining the goal of keeping the death decision separate from the donation choice, the guidance would permit doctors to bring up the idea of having one's organs procured post euthanasia. My emphasis. Thank you. 
All eligible, medically suitable euthanasia patients should be given an opportunity to consider organ and tissue donation. Initially, some jurisdictions might prefer to begin with systems that respond only to patient-initiated requests. Hello, 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 what does that mean? Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it means some really, really dark stuff. So, yeah, I'll be doing a lot of praying. This means the idea to donate could come from the very doctor who will be killing the patient. Families could also be kept in the dark. Hey, hey. there you go. How do you like that, Canadians? Definitely some papers. I will. Yeah, I, I'm gonna. Maybe there'll be a link to these. Uh, I forgot to look. I was just kind of, you know, going just uh, recovering, just recovering. Families could also be kept in the dark, both about the euthanasia request itself and the organ donation. Donation discussion must respect patient autonomy and first-person consent should be obtained and upheld in the event of family disagreement. First-person consent should direct all subsequent decisions unless consent was revoked. In other words, since euthanasia is considered a medical treatment, a family could first learn that their disabled, say for example, their disabled son had been euthanized and harvested when they received the call from the morgue. Doctors and nurses with moral objections could be forced to participate even if they object to euthanasia or taking organs from someone who was killed. Healthcare professionals should act in accordance with requirements for effective referral, the guidance pronounces. In Canada, Effective referral means that a dissenting doctor can say no, but also must refer the patient to a doctor known to be willing to perform the deed. In other words, healthcare professionals would be forced to co be complicit in acts to which they have profound moral or religious objection. An Ontario Canada Court of Appeals recently ruled that all doctors who object to legal medical acts such as abortion, euthanasia, or transgender related interventions must make effective referrals. I scoured the document and do you know what I didn't find? Any requirement that patients who ask for euthanasia receive suicide prevention or treatment to help them overcome the desire to die. In other words, the guidance places patient autonomy above the value of the patient's life. Hippocratic oath be damned. Even though some of these patients could later change their minds about wanting to die if they received professional medical mental health support. The guidance requires the euthanasia doctor be donor to be dead before <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Freudian slip there. Before organ procurement in keeping with usual organ donation requirements. But why? Let's follow the logic. If we accept the killing of patients who want to die, and if we accept allowing such patients to consent to organ procurement after their death, why not just skip the euthanasia suicide part and go directly to procuring a living patient's organs? After all, the live organ harvesting would provide better and more viable organs and also result in desire in the desired death. Oh, Wesley! Get real. No one would ever go that far. They haven't yet, but articles advocating euthanasia by organ harvesting have been published in some of the world's most respected, respected medical, because that's what I say now, <laughs> medical and bioethics journals. I mean, let's say bio journals. <laughs> 
For example, a 2018 column in the New England Journal of Medicine opined that in countries in with which euthanasia is legal, some patients may want to be sure that organ procurement won't begin before they are declared dead. Others may want not only a rapid, peaceful, and painless death, but also the option of donating as many organs as possible and in the best condition possible. In such cases, it may be ethically preferable to procure the patient's organs in the same way that, the, that organs are procured from brain dead patients with the use of general anesthesia to ensure the patient's comfort. Thus, the organ procurement surgeon would be transformed from exclusively a protector of life into a killer whose causes, who causes death by removing vital organs. Belgium, Netherland, the Netherlands and Canada demonstrate that, con that conjoining euthanasia and organ harvesting logically flows from legalizing so-called mercy killing. As the pressure to legalize assisted suicide continues to mount here, New Jersey just enacted such a law and the Maine legislature has sent a legalization bill to the governor. We face the prospect of a profound moral crisis. Will we continue Will we continue to view the terminally ill, seriously sick, anguished psychiatric patients and people with disabilities who want to die as moral equals whose lives are of a measurable value, even if they cannot see it, and hence as worthy of the same rigorous suicide prevention we pro would provide to healthy suicidal persons? Yes, because... This, the machine, the health machine, does not let any alternative into it. All it is is allopathic medicine. They don't consider anything else. And it's got to be everything. It's got to be completely integrated. Anybody with the two brain cells to rub together knows that healthcare should be completely integrated every aspect because you want to be the best that you can be right so you get the things that work and believe me certain holistic health care things work certain vitamin therapies work they should be if if you're going to use taxpayers monies to fund health care you should have everything simple as that you can't just take people's money and then and then do this, they have a crappy healthcare system, and then profit off their organs. You just, it's, it's, I'm sorry. It, it's unethical. It should be illegal. Especially when, I'd, if we did a poll, I'd say 90% of Canadians have no idea. Okay, it's, yeah, there we go. So that's New Jersey. I'll put the links. I will put the links of the grand poopa of articles. It just seems to be common knowledge to everybody else except us Canadians. <laughs> 